Good afternoon. Welcome to Folks Know Art Talk. I'm Laura Womack, and with me is executive producer Jen McHugh. She's going to be off camera, I think, mostly tonight, but she says hello. And today we're talking with artist Janine Dunn Wei, who has been generous to invite us into her studio so we can get more of an idea about the careful preparation that goes into her beautiful, uh, very free floral still lifes. One critic described her, your brush strokes, Janine, as confident. And I think that's such a beautiful compliment to give because I think many of us in this community are very aware of all the work that goes into uh, artwork, the study, the composition, the planning. Uh, and I think Janine, Janine's work is one that really represents all the preparation. We're gonna learn about all the preparation you do tonight to achieve these very free and um, joyful still lifes. Uh, and to the years of work that you put into developing your art. And the result is uh, these very, I think that's why the, the compliment of confidence is so uh, enormous because there's so much prep that goes in and yet we don't see it, it seems effortless. So tonight we're gonna take a look at that and I'd like to tell you just a little bit about Janine's background. She has exhibited widely, including at Phillips Mill. I think you've been exhibiting at Phillips Mill since 1995. Janine has won many awards. She has exhibited at the Trenton City Museum in uh, at Ellerslie. She's exhibited at the Woodmere Art Museum in Chestnut Hill, Philadelphia. She has, uh, you have your BFA from Villanova. She has studied in Siena, Paris, Guanajuato, Mexico, Paris, and she's taken many master classes, master classes at the Philadelphia Academy of Fine Arts and in the Pennsylvania Academy of Fine Arts. So um, Janine Dunway, thank you very much for joining us on our talk. Thank you for coming. <laughs> and thank you everyone in the audience for joining us as usual. This is your opportunity to talk to our artists that we feature here. So please put your questions into the, the Q&A for us. And that's easy for us to find us find them. And tonight is a more challenging night because we are live in the studio. We're navigating um, many devices and technology and we're navigating um, uh, this, the, this, just the format too. So we appreciate you bearing with us put the questions in the Q&A so that we can find them easily. And we'll get started. All right. So here we are in the studio, Janine. Get us, give us a little orientation, if you would. Okay, this is my space. Um, and I spend a lot of time right here. Um, and I have this great white table that is constantly in flux. Flowers are dying, apples are coming and going, sometimes, I see little worms coming out of flowers. Um, but for me, I'm no longer interested in going out to paint. I want to have the control of the colors and the setup that I want. And that way I can plan my paintings a lot better. Um, so if, if you look at this, I have um, mostly a green uh, and blue motif with hot spots of orange, which was kind of the thinking behind this, um, this still life. And, um, you know, one of the things that it, it was very amazing when Laura wrote what she did after just a couple of conversations, because we didn't exactly say what she wrote, but I was really thrilled when she came up with the intention freedom thing. And the other thing that made me happy was joy. I just feel like art is joyous. And so, as human beings, art is our biggest connection. And as human beings, we can share God's love and light through paintings. And, uh, you know, bakers do it with cupcakes and dancers. And so the freedom thing is the intention is you want everything so perfect and you're going for that, but you don't want it to be tight. And um, I also, as I'm aging in this process, I'm trying to listen more now to my heart. What's in here? Listening to instincts rather than 
an exact drawing of where things are. And hopefully you also get that at the same time, so. And to be able to do that, Janine, you have to have the experience that you have over, how many years have you been painting and, and involved with art? You know, I can remember having a flashlight at my desk when my parents thought I was sound asleep, but that would go back to like the fourth grade. So it's, you know, if you have this in you, it, you need to do it. You need to feed your soul or like sometimes you think, oh my God, it's been a week since I painted. I'm just gonna, you know, go crazy if I don't get down there and do something. So it's, it's really a joyful, wonderful thing. Although, as I was just saying to Jen, it's kind of the agony and the ecstasy. You do something that you don't like, or you think it ought to work, and why isn't it working? And you've done all the prep, and it's like there's highs and lows, and not an awful lot of in between. So, <laughs> very good. All right. Well, let's see. We've you've got a very tidy little setup here with your brushes. I'm not sure what the audience can see, but we've got your brushes. You've got all your paints here. Um, what's happening here, Janine? So, um, this is the first two paintings I did from this setup. So I'm keeping them where I can see them as reference and working on another piece. But what I'm doing here is something that kind of goes to Laura's freedom intention, which I had never thought about before. But I've, I really enjoy working a larger piece with a small piece, usually a six by six. And what happens is, the one piece will inform the next. And by way of example, when I was working on this, I was redrawing some lines and I made these little scratch outs here. And I thought, gee, I like that, that looks good. So when I came to my next piece, I incorporated that with this little floral pattern. And you know, I adore Matisse and the things he does with patterns. So I'm exploring that and art is so much exploration. So I enjoy having a piece setting it up, getting my colors, getting it working, and then taking a really big brush on a smaller piece and laying down broad strokes of color, color shapes. And it's very interesting. If you look at this, it feels as though in this piece, I'm abandoning some formal qualities and the illusion and the extra description and just going with shots of color shape to make the statement. And I'm usually happier with a smaller piece. <laughs> with a small piece with a large brush, that seems a little counterintuitive. It, it does, unless you think about what you're trying to do, a large color shape rather than itty bitty little strokes. So well, what about some of the subtleties in the shading that you need to give dimension to your subject? So that's a really good question. I, I'm trying to break through like, you know, strands of hair and go for the whole broad mass that the hair is showing us. So um, uh, I will take an object like this, this orange, it's basically one color. This orange is only three colors. I could sit here and look at my orange and pull so many different shades. But if I keep it smaller and uh, unified three colors, I'm making a broader statement, which is just much more alive for me. All right, let's take a look too. Okay, so I don't know how much we've seen of the, of the work in project, process, I mean, process, <laughs> progress, thank you. Um, and how much we've seen of that, Jen, thank you. <laughs> As I get tongue tied here. But, and then I'd like to take a look back at the setup because I know Janine, we've talked before about how you really put a lot of effort into not just the um, orientation, the relationship of the objects to each other, but the aspect ratio of whether you've got a square canvas or you've got an elongated, you know, a long rectangular canvas. I know this is really a critical thing to you and we'll talk about the mirror in a minute. Uh, again, it's this, um, preparation behind your work? So when I put together a still life, I will um, be instinctively using my eyes to see um, how things are going together. But um, the important thing is, it's my first stab at the painting. I'm seeing the painting in 3D and I'm always thinking, how am I gonna put it into 2D? And how am I gonna take 
you know, there's this huge chaotic amount of stuff and you want to simplify it into smaller segments. So if you want the, um, all that chaos, take a photograph, it's all there. But there's something that the artist does and every artist does it differently and focuses on different things, but you're trying to get to the essence of the subject and what you're trying to say rather than all those details. All right, Janine, we have some questions from the audience. Uh -huh. um, Santa and Richard ask, are you inspired by your own gardens? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. We have uh, not only gardens with peonies and all kinds of, uh, and even just this winter, I was painting with helibores, which are blooming in December and January. So yes, always. And flowers are basically my muse, they are. Uh, here we're looking at roses, which are obviously hothouse roses grown commercially, but I know you also work with uh, wildflowers that you find either in your backyard or in nature somewhere. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Um, another question from Jennifer who asks, what is your favorite subject matter and medium this day, these days? Well, I feel I'm completely and totally married to oil paint. I do not um, have much interest at all at this point in moving on into other uh, mediums. Maybe I'll dabble with some collage. And I'm also enjoying right now incorporating pastel pencils into the oil paint. But for me, it's oil paints. Whoops, we got it. a little, we got a technical thing here, but that's all right. We're working with a, all right, let's let go. Let's see if that works. It's all right, let go. <laughs> Gotta trust the device. We're there we go. Make it exciting. <laughs> Come on. Thanks everybody. Here you are with live webinar. All right, good. Thank you for your help. And we've got Dennis Riley behind the scenes. We appreciate it. We've got a big <laughs> production crew today. Um, a lovely <laughs> production crew. Thank yeah. you. All right, let's see. Um, so you were talking about your medium and you were saying that you're married to oils and that you're starting to use pastel pencils. Um, another person asked about oils, but you have in your past, you've worked with other media, is that right? I have. Um, it, when I was studying, I did an awful lot of watercolor. And um, now I am, uh, I'm, and then I went into a pastel stage. And you know, I, I think that art is um, so connected to life it, it, that you, I almost can't really even separate them. Um, and part of the pastels was at that point in my life, I had four wonderful children. And if I had to pick them up or if somebody needed a bottle, it's so much easier to drop your pastel than to um, drop your oil brushes, which are gonna harden and get ruined. So it was just a great thing at that point in my life. And I've done lots of pastels, but now I'm totally gun ho on oil paint. And we are gonna look a little bit later about some of your, some of your earlier work. So that we've got that coming up. Why don't we move over here? All right. Our producer is uh, moving us along. I did want to ask though, because Dennis Riley, our, uh, one of our produ content producers, was mentioning the challenges of working with live flowers and how they change as you are in the process of painting them. You know, it used to drive me crazy when they would move and I wanted them exactly there. But now I'm looking at it more as an opportunity, maybe, the painting is going to be better with this new change and it, it's more than that you're you're painting okay so if you see a movie or a film or you read a book all these other art forms are seen over a period of time and they unfold but with a painting you see the entire thing at one time so what i look at now is not just getting a little snapshot but showing the experience of sitting there for days and days and how it moves and changes. So now I think nothing of if the flower got bigger and that works for the painting, I'll make it bigger. I'll scrape out the one that fell off or the dead ones can fall in the, into place too. Sometimes the petals fall down and that was, oh my God, just the element you needed to really satisfy the painting. So you, you need to make the painting the primary thing and if you can show the time that elapsed to the essence of what you're looking at, 
it just is a much better pain. All right, very good. Um, we have a question, and I think we have some examples that really explain this. Can Janine please clarify the process? Does she work on the larger piece and then the smaller six by six piece? So it reminds me of your new stuff over there. Do you want to go over there? Sure. Um, I'll be right along. But to answer that question very briefly, I love to work the two of them at one time. And I'll start on the big one usually so that I can establish where things go and be freer for the smaller one. And once I've seen it on the, um, in the rectangle or the square, I have a good idea where to put things. You know, the small one is easier because I've seen my subject, gotten used to it, and I will go back and forth. As one thing happens here, it might be the answer to something there. Or if I get stuck here and it's not really working well, I'll say, okay, fresh start, do over. Let me go over here and see, see how it works. All right, so what, what are we looking at here, Janine? We've got uh, two different sets, I believe, of works that here are in progress. So um, as kind of a disclaimer, the process of art and exploration has brought me to this. And it's, it's very different, I think, from what I had been doing. And um, so I wanted to do a big, long piece and I wanted it to represent the time theme. It's kind of like a timeline. And um, so I started with this painting. This was my very first uh, sketch for the painting and the preparation. And I was very pleased with it. And there's a lot of freshness and crispness because it was just a sketch, here I go. But how am I gonna make it work on the right format? So then I, I did some drawings, which we don't have here, but then I, I worked it on this. And this was a crazy thing, but for a long period, this whole orange section was an aqua blue color. And at about three in the morning, I realized, gee, that is just not going to work. So scrape, 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 put in the orange. And I went to bed fairly discouraged, but I, I felt better about the orange. So then I, I kept working and I've been doing a lot of exploring recently. Um, this was the next one that I did. And um, so back to my disclaimer, you know, what I'm trying to say is some of the pieces you'll see at the gallery or um, on display are already um, my motif and something I'm comfortable with. But when you're putting out new work, you're like, it takes you a while to really see what it is and if you like it or if it needs to be improved. So this is kind of all preliminary, sort of in the studio stuff, not out there yet. But um, so then this is a, a piece of mylar and I've been anxious to try working on mylar, which is really, really slick and you can take stuff off really easily. So that was a whole new uh, feature of exploring for this new painting. And then, um, I was looking for elements to move from this cold to this spring-like image with an interior in between. So I, um, I used the, the gray vessel and I tried just having the window and I wasn't really satisfied. So I kept working and finally started on, on the big piece. And I started at 7 a.m. one day and I worked on this um, until about five in the afternoon. And I maybe took two 20 minute breaks. And um, I was pretty well sick of it at that point. And I came down after dinner at about 8.30 just to take a look. And I worked until 5 a.m. because I just couldn't put it down. It's a, a point in my evolution as an artist where I'm delving more into the reaction to the paint itself and what it's doing. And I was really excited about something that happened in here and I was really pleased. So um, I went to bed extremely happy, just elated. And um, a few days later, I fell back down the hill and thought, oh my God, this is terrible, what am I doing? So I started another one. And this time I fixed the mylar to a, um, uh, a board and I finally got myself to get the colors in here that I was looking for instead of this. So I'm gonna go back into that next time I have a chance. 
but it's it's just a process. You keep moving, changing things, and sometimes it takes you months and months to know if it worked or it didn't. You know, you you have to just put it aside for a while and then take a look at it. Let it let it sit inside and then come back to it with fresh eyes. Exactly. You know, this reminds me of something I think I asked Bob Chris, the um, famous National Geographic photographer we had on the show. Somebody had told me years ago that for photographers, the difference between an amateur and a professional was you know, the number of discards in the trash bin for the, am the amateur versus, you know, obviously the professional throws out more. Now, I think there's more to it than that. Obviously, you've had years and years of art training and planning, and so there's experience that goes into it as well. But I, this, what you're showing us here reminds me of that, of how much work you know, you've put into not just setting up the um, setting up the still life, but you know you've really worked on different sections of the painting, different right. versions of it, until you get you hone in on what it is that you want. And part of it's instinct, and part of it's your brain telling you what you should be doing. Mm -hmm. So it's an interesting dichotomy. But I did hear Bob, and I thought. One of the things he said that was really magnificent was, you know, it's lighting, it's composi a composition, but then it's that magic moment. Is is the setup just the way it should be? Is and I I don't know the photography term, but he said that one sixty fourth of a second is the one. And I thought, wow, that's right. And if if it all, you know, if the stars align, then you'll get a painting that you like. Right, exactly. And so, do you get rid of many paintings? I mean, other than. They hear you're working towards a, a particular one, and there are lots of paintings that are not going to make it into. I think you're represented by Patricia Hutton Gallery, right. and she's wonderful. It's a, just a great gallery. I've been just very blessed to be with her in Doylestown. But is there a chance that are there paintings that you know they they never make it at all? Oh my final gosh, time? hundreds of them, and it's kind of it's more of the time thing and the life thing. You'll go back to an old stack of paintings. And you'll just be horrified. You'll think, oh my God, I wouldn't let anybody see these. And you either paint over them or you uh, heave them away as quick as you can. So but, that trash bin is important. Oh, very <laughs> important. Very important. All right, Janine, behind us here is, uh, or in the other part of the room is, and say hello to Dennis, who's helping us out. Um, this is some of your early work, which <laughs> looks so different. I would not have known if you hadn't have told me that it was your work. And we'll let Jen get a head on there. Um, tell us about what we're looking at here. Let's start with the uh, sunflowers, please. Uh, the sunflowers um, are, you know, kind of special because my husband went out and bought me a beautiful piece of watercolor paper right after I got into the Phillips Mill for the very first time. And um, I just reworked the sunflowers that had been in the show in pastel and did this, um, watercolor, which as you can see, it's very, very tightly rendered. And, uh, you know, our lifetime, but I'm in a different time in my life. And I just, I'm looking for a different satisfaction in the paintings. So these in this section are all just older pieces to show where I've been and where the journey is taking me now. So Lori asks, when did flowers become your muse? Because obviously they were important to you early. You know, they've always spoken to me. I just love flowers. And, um, you know, it always stimulates a huge reaction in me. And they have incredible color. They have a velvety texture. They can be stark or they can be bunched. They're, the opportunities are just... Endless. All right, and tell us about uh, Jen's doing a, a sort of a pan through of your various works. We'll look at each one quickly in succession. We have a lot to get through. So what is this one here? A landscape, rare now these days from you, Janine. Right, and uh, we were talking about I couldn't control things. But with this painting, um, I had been at the beach with my family, working all day, getting this all set up. And again, times moved on, the painting's established and some guy comes along and he sits down on the beach. And I thought, perfect, I gotta get him fast, but that's exactly what I need there. And he didn't stay for half a second. He sat down, he got up and he ran away. 
So I turned to my nephew and I said, look, just run down the beach till I tell you to stop and sit there till I give you the sign to get back up. And he was a sweetheart. And it's part of the life art connection. He's he's a grown guy with his own family now, but um, there's the painting, it remains. All right. And then next to it is looks like a very, a miniature Bucks County landscape. Really, exactly. With, with those brights that, and those really happy colors that you're so well known for, Janine, in a, I'm taking an evening piece. Or is it morning? It was evening and I was driving my daughter home from her horseback riding lesson. And I jumped out of the car and started taking pictures because the scene was so fabulous. And that's the result there. All right, and I'm gonna pull, out, I'm gonna reach in here and pull out because we have to see this magnificent portrait. I think you were quite young when you did this portrait and yet the level of accomplishment is extraordinary. Who are we looking at? And tell us about the, the work itself. You know, it, I was 17 years old and I had been trying to get into an art class at my high school and finally I got in and it was like, wow, you know, the curtain opened. I was just so excited. And this was one of the first things I did in that class. And it was, I started thinking I got to go to art school, and, but most of my college applications were already in. So um, it was kind of uh so you'd been doing, you'd been on your own just doing artwork for about 11 years, if I do the math and remember properly, and you hadn't had a lot of art instruction, and this is what you came out with? I think you made the right decision to go to art school. <laughs> yeah. So here, again, while we're looking at this, and maybe uh, I think people would like to, to look at you as well. Um, so again, here is this person who obviously has developed your skills, uh, a talent that you had, I'd have to say natively to be able to do that so young with so little training. <clears throat> it's really, I mean, it's per, you, normally when you look at early work, you see, yeah, there's something a little bit funny with this part of the face or something like that. And I, I don't see anything like that. So uh, again, we're looking at this very thoughtful deliberateness to your work and now you have gone you've applied all of that to the freedom that we see in your works now i couldn't agree more i couldn't agree more it doesn't happen overnight it, it takes a while and you know seeing is a huge part of art it's it's skill with the brush but more importantly what are you looking at what are you seeing and it's changed for me so much over the years what i'm looking to accomplish now and what I'm seeing. All right. So um, maybe we'll go and we've got, Janine has prepared for us a wall of her artwork, which is lovely. If you guys want to go over there, I'll meet you there, but I'd like to check in with the audience and see what questions we have. I'll be right with you. Maybe you can start talking about one of them, Janine, with, with Jen. So if we, um wanted to look at this. I, I do frequently do series of paintings. I um, set it up, draw, do value studies, and then come up with a painting. And frequently I'm not completely satisfied. I'd like to um, bring it further, see what else I can get, and if I can improve on what I've already done. So this painting I blew up and um, you know, it's also interesting. These are all intimate objects. These are like some of my really favorite items. Um, but I was craving a little bit more abstraction and a little bit more pop of color. And I would honestly say this is one of my favorite paintings. I don't want to look at that old stuff anymore. I, I want to look at more movement, more brushstroke, more uh, excitement. All right, let's take some questions. Uh, Janine, if you want to have a seat, we can come back to your wall. Uh, but I want to look at some of the questions from the listeners. I'm going to borrow back the laptop that Jen's been using. Um, I think very nice to see uh, your gallerist is um, asking, Patricia Hutton uh -huh. is asking, sometimes I refer to your work as a la prima because of its freshness and all its energy, but they involve so much work and study. Should I not use that term in referring to your work? Hi, Patricia. Hi, Patricia. You know, it's very interesting because 
I would say during the pandemic, there's been so many classes and so many fabulous artists who are offering um, their, their style online that it's changed a lot over the years. And I used to be just strictly a la prima. And now I'm kind of groping in the dark, trying to figure out, I like that fresh a la prima look, but sometimes I want to be sure things are exactly where I want and do more drawing and incorporate um, some of those pastel colored lines that can enhance the painting. So we're, we're, we're moving between those. <laughs> I think you're in a transition period now, Janine, is what I've heard so. from you in several different ways. The way you're looking at, I think you're looking at new colors, new color combinations. And I think uh, you told me once before that you, you know, color, you would let the painting take you, you would set it up and then you would let it take you. And now I think you are coming in with more intentionality. Is that right? That's, I would say very true, but I'm wondering where it's going to take me. I, wa I want to get good enough in my dressmanship that I can still do the a la prima and explosive painting and have it set up better. But again, there's something inside that I feel is going to take me to something new and exciting and I'm waiting to see where it is. And that, I think that's so interesting about the creative process. You know something's out there you don't know what it is. How do you find it when you don't know? <laughs> Again, it's, it's, it's like sometimes I sit there and it used to be, I would always just keep painting, but now sometimes I'll just sit there. And I know Stephen Korn did this, like for two hours in the morning, he would just sit and look and I will do that. It used to be so, okay, here's next, here's next. And sometimes now I'm just like, okay, what's next? Where do I go? And I'm, it's like a puzzle. I feel like the answer's there and I'm trying to find it. Now, I'm gonna do a technical swap here. Jen, do you want the laptop back so you can ask the listening sure. questions? All right, I'm gonna hand those back. And meanwhile, I'm gonna get back to my questions. Uh, and again, it's kind of fun, Janine, you're a good sport for uh, letting us experiment <laughs> with your art talk. Um, it's such a pleasure to be in your studio and be able to see, I, I think a lot of our, um, our audience has said that they really enjoy seeing the artist studio. And so uh, it's nice that now in these, as the uh, transmission rate for COVID is down, that we can come too, but it's a new uh, technical challenge. So you're a good sport. And as are all of you in the audience, I appreciate that. Okay, Jen, what do we have? Uh, we have two questions about color. Uh, Kathy wants to know, please share your color palette. I adore it. And then David Waite asked, what are three or so colors on your palette that you can't do without? Uh, um, I am in love with cobalt teal. I, I love cadmium orange. Um, and I actually, despite the amount of new colors I'm getting, I've actually shrunk my um, palette a lot. I've really removed all of the earth colors and I'm down to mostly prismatic colors. And if you note, if, if you if you work at it, the excitement of color that you can get and the earth tones that you need, you can get also, but they're a little bit more vibrant, I think. So actually, I'm glad we're talking about color because uh, I, your, your color is, I think, one of your uh, trademarks. And I think of your color as being a lot of pinks and purples and these, you know, lovely, um, blue reds, you know, such as you're wearing right now. But I also personally, I really love um, a kind of a chartreuse, the greeny yellowy tones. And you use those very much as sort of an accent or an offset. I think there's, you know, I don't have the background in color theory to really understand what is happening there, but I, it, I find it very effective. Is that a deliberate thing? Um, sometimes it's deliberate and sometimes it's an instinctive thing and, uh, but you never get away from your, your preferences. I love pinks and purples and bright, vibrant colors. Of course, you need some deeper, darker tones to offset them if you want those colors to pop. So, right. and I think you're putting a little bit of orange in them now. You're using more orange. I think. I'm fascinated with orange right now. I'm just, it's definitely my craze at the moment. 
And that's I, that's a color I've always loved. And I think it goes, it gives some depth to those yellowy greens that I love so much. It, it does give that sort of a little bit of a darker note to it. Exactly. And if you had, as you had noticed in the chartreuse, in the um, ping I'm working on now, I did throw oranges into the green to go towards that um, color. Right, good. Um, so Janine, the, you know, a lot of what your work is, is considered traditionally feminine. You know, the color palette you use, the subject matter, obviously, is very feminine. And in art history, these things uh, haven't been taken as seriously. What do you, what do you say? You know, it's amazing you can hit these questions. I'm, um, I've always been a little bit like, oh, I'm like a tiny little girl and so nobody's going to take me serious. And I've had people say, look, just don't wear pink. And I was like, what? It's my favorite color, you know? So um, it's, it's a very interesting thing, but uh, you know, Mo Brooker just died and he certainly isn't a tiny woman and he certainly had the audacity to get out there and use those colors. And you know what? Again, this is my life and what I'm doing. And I'm, um, I'm, I'm using my scars and the colors that I wear because I love them. And I'm just gonna go with the things I love and, and let my own nature speak. And that's all I can give, you know? You said that you uh, like to paint joy. You wanna paint things yes, that make you happy. absolutely. Why? It could be considered more serious. I mean, I, we all want to go to the joy, but you know, again, this, mm. this concept of what is serious art? You know, you know is joy serious art? Oh my God, the most serious, I think it's the most serious and it's good for you. If you're painting uh, depression and sadness, well, that's gonna wear off on you. If you're depressed and sad, come down and I'll give you some cadmium orange and some, you know, quinoctodone magenta and that's gonna change your mood and make you happy. <laughs> that's, that's an incredibly compelling argument. You just won my vote. Uh, Jen, do we have more questions from the audience or shall I go forward with mine? Um, one that has come up, I don't know if we've answered this. Uh, how many studies of a still life do you typically do and how long does a finished piece take and how do you know it's finished? Those are all such great color uh, questions. How do you know it's finished? Um, there's something inside you that says, okay, I'm satisfied, I better not touch it again. But a lot of times I've had a piece that I liked a lot and then I overwork it, I just keep pushing it. And that's because I'm not happy. But I would recommend that what you need to do when you get to a certain point, you um, leave it be and wait a while and then look again with fresher eyes that aren't as emotionally involved at the moment. And then you'll have a better gauge. But if you look at the painting right above Laura's eye, uh, head, oh, see am, I, am I throwing things off here? No, no, no. Anyway, no. there's probably about 10 paintings underneath there. It used to be an oriental rug, and now it's a, a checkered pattern. <laughs> and there's a dog sneaking in on the right-hand side that wasn't there in the beginning. So I, I have some pictures of the, the changes. And now I kind of think, well, it would be nice to have all those different paintings but you would never have ended up with this if you didn't have the time and the changes occurring. So in the future, when the art historians are looking at Janine Dunway paintings and they do the, whatever that technique is where they use cameras to look at the layers before, they're gonna be confused because they're gonna be about 10 underneath. Is that right? Some of them, some of them, but my <laughs> older pieces were not like that. So I do feel like, um, um, branching into new and exciting territory. Right. Now the, the work that we looked at where you showed us the different process, the different timeline, the timeline of you broke it out with a long rectangle. Are you going to stay with that one and add a little bit to it or are you going to take a break? Are you going to start another one? Um, What's your plan there? I'm going to work my series here with that still life and see how long it goes and what I get out of it. But then I would really like to come back into that and um, uh, one of the things I'm more focused in now is getting the color spot on. And when you do the two paintings at one time, you can see how the slightest change in the tone or the, the shade or the chroma of the color can um, really affect what's going on around it and all the other colors. 
which is part of the do two at one time. There's um, a nuance that occurs with a certain stroke. Even if you think you're putting the same stroke with the same vigor in another spot, and you just have to keep having the conversation with the painting and responding to what it's looking for. Did I answer the question? Yeah, I think you did. Do we have more questions, Jen? Um, um, I'm trying to kind of combine because there's so many comments and questions. Um, that's great. We appreciate everyone's yes, feedback. Yes, yes. And Sally just said, your paintings make me happy. Patricia Hutton said, I can tell you from seeing it day after day for many years that Janine's work brings people joy. Uh, people come to the gallery to be uplifted and inspired. To bring happiness and joy is a noble goal. So I think that's very great. That's wonderful. Thank right. you. Thanks, Patricia. Um, there is kind of a consistent theme about working in plein air versus working in the studios? Is there a specific environment or material that's integral to your work? Well, the, 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 I would like to attack more still lifes with the landscape behind it. You know, if you've, um, if you've got a window and you can paint behind the still life, that's wonderful. But there is, um, quite a uh, a case to be made for painting plein air, being there, smelling it, seeing it. And sometimes, you know, I just uh, was on a beach and did paintings out there and I could see the difference between the studio pieces and the pieces there. Um, so, but for me, I need more time than I can get just standing outside. I need to have the control and keep working in here. And I think I can get a lot of that just through the time passaging and the light changing and the objects moving slightly the way they do. Um, do you ever think about other non-flower still lives, Janine? I am expanding. It started, and you can see it in some of the work. It used to be just the flowers. And now I'm incorporating the tabletop and the, uh, the ground and maybe something behind it. I'm interested in, getting a little bit more into deep space. And, um... you know, a couple of years ago, uh, I had the privilege of visiting you and you were looking at, you were working on a, a, an abstract, I believe. And I remember I really enjoyed it, but and I thought I would see more abstracts from you and I have it. I'm, I'm, I'm using still life to move in an abstract direction, but I don't think I'll ever want to complete completely give up um, the items and the objects. All right. Um, you do a lot of reading of, of other artists, their lives. Um, I, I, I think you go into who they are as a person and not just their techniques. What does that do for you as an artist? Um, it's just so wonderful to feel as though you are not the only one who's struggled with this and that these silly little things that you can be obsessed with, you're not the only one who's, who's been doing that. You know, if it takes you 40 minutes to get that exact shade of the color that you want, you think, well, what kind of lunatic am I? But you see the difference in your work and you know from reading and talking to other artists that they've been through it and it's not so unusual. Right. And so it's sort of an affirmation. Well said. Yeah. Jen, do we have some more questions or I don't wanna keep the floor to myself here. Um, are you ever surprised that others love a piece that you are dissatisfied with? Can you la later understand why they like it? Uh, that does happen. And I think that um, everybody sees things differently and they, want something different and they react from their soul in a different way than I do. And maybe I've transitioned a little bit with my scene from where they are now with their scene, which is why art is so personable and everybody sees something different. And sometimes I'll bring a painting for like a critique or to the gallery. And I think, 
oh, I wonder what they see when they're looking at this. It's, and it's kind of, um, you know, it's kind of like, oh my God, nerve wracking. Will they like it? You know what I mean? But you just have to do what you're moved to do at that time. You are in a group of artists yes. uh, who you all critique each other's work, as I understand it. You know, tell me about how that group works for you. Obviously, that that stays what happens in that group stays within that group. But what does that do for you? What do you get out of it? How do you support each other as artists? We get so much out of it. We support each other so much. Again, for affirmation and direction. And wait a minute, what's wrong with this painting? And if all these other people can come up with or focus on a different aspect. It just gives you more to think about and a different way to look at it. And sometimes you come home and say, never even noticed that. The most obvious thing on the page and I never even noticed it. But I'm actually involved in a couple of art groups and I've been um, doing a critique online uh, with a, a wonderful group also. So um, it's so important to have some kind of an artistic community that you can, first of all, a lot of people don't want to talk about it all day, every day. So <laughs> it's good to find the people who do. <laughs> I, I recognize that, that sentiment. Uh, Chi Bravo told us on this program uh, that she doesn't like to share her work too soon because other people's ideas about it might affect her intention and where she's going. If I hope I, I quoted her, remembered her correctly on that. How do you, do you agree with that? I, I can see where she's coming from. And uh, if there is an idea, it, it can do that. But for me, I'm only trying to make myself happy. I want to enjoy what I'm seeing and I'm hoping people will like that. But if I'm gonna put that kind of hours in, I have to be satisfied myself. Well, this is really a lifestyle for you. I mean, this, the kinds of hours you're talking about and the background that you're putting into each painting, this is, it, it's a, it's a lifestyle. I just think that's a, a major commitment to one thing in your life. You know, I think if you want to do something really badly, and it's funny because, you know, this is my life stage two. I have four really wonderful children. I have a wonderful husband and they used to be the focus. Like I would keep my finger in this at all costs, but now I have more of a freedom and with time. And it's interesting because I, I always thought, oh, once I paint, I'll be satisfied. Oh no, more you paint, the more you wanna paint, the more it's just a cycle. And then you're, you're seeing something new and now you need to paint something new. And it's just really exciting for me right now to have the time to put into it and to be able to rework a piece over and over and wonder what the new um, discovery is going to be. More questions from the audience? You know, I also wanted to say, yeah. somebody asked for my palette and can we, I, I'm very happy to share uh, all the colors, yeah. but I didn't rattle them off. So can we put that in a chat or something? No, we, we, can, we can do it right now. You do you want to look at your palette? I don't do we have the ability to get back up and head out? All right. Oh, we gotta do you want to do that? Agile proof. Okay, or <laughs> or if you want to stay there, I'll just shout out the colors. Um, I've been using um cobalt teal, uh cad red light, cadmium orange, ultramarine blue, cad yellow light, oh cadmium green is just a gorgeous, gorgeous color. Um and so I'm, I'm using a warm and a cool of a lot of colors. Um, oh, this is a key color, Indian yellow. So it's Indian yellow, cad yellow light are my yellows. I've got cobalt teal um, and ultramarine blue as my pair of blues. And I use, the, uh, uh, that's purple, but I usually use cad red light and um, alizarin crimson. And thank you for that, Janine. Um, and also before, we just have a couple of minutes left, but this is one thing that when we came before, we took a look at and I thought might be interesting. You've got some color studies here going on. What's happening? What are we looking at? Well, a lot of times, so one of the things I've been focusing on recently, I think I said this, but just getting that color exactly right can make such a huge difference. Um, the piece that you use with my self-portrait, 
I kept working and working on those greens in the background and suddenly I found the right color. I didn't know I found it, but I put it down and it was like, what a difference that makes. So a lot of times what I do when I'm working on a piece or I've worked on it the day before and I come down first thing in the morning and I realize that's just not working, I'll try new combinations and I'll, I'll try moving these colors very subtly and getting um, more nuanced and neutral tones. And it makes a huge difference. And so I'm working on that. Well, I think you've got a lot of work to do. <laughs> <laughs> we really appreciate your hospitality. And I thank you so much for uh, coming in and looking at the things that give me joy here in my studio. Well, so you've you shared, you shared a lot of joy with us. And we appreciate everyone joining us and uh, and bearing with us as we experiment, I'd like to try to do this again and see if we can get it refined. You've been a good sport. Um, so thank you all. Um, and I also would like to let you know that coming up next on Our Talk, I'm excited. Jean, I think you, Janine, you might enjoy this as well. Uh, Joe Gersak took Jen and I on a tour of the Utrecht Paint Factory in Brooklyn. We got to see them mixing the paint, and he is, he knows so much about materials. So we're gonna take a look at that. We're gonna take a look at the Paint Factory video and photographs, and that's coming up on March 27th. Um, with us is behind the camera is Jen McHugh. We don't get to see her lovely face today, but we've heard her voice. We got some glimpses of Dennis Riley, who is our content producer. Also, uh, behind the scenes is Jean the Hitch. Uh, for Phillips Mill Art Talk, I'm Laura Woman. Thank you again. Bye.